live. Hi, my name is Greg Lee. Uh, I wanted to start with a little bit of a caveat. It has been quite some time that I've done, since I've done any public speaking. Um, it may take me a little bit of time to get like rolling, but at the same time, if I get excited about something, it is likely that I will speed up pretty quickly. Uh, and so, if I do so, please like give me a give me a hand gesture. Don't want to slow down, uh, and I will be mindful of that. Uh, the second one is language is inherently limiting. By even trying to describe something, you're kind of putting it in a box and and giving it definition, um, but nothing is definite and everything is open. So when I say source and you want to hear God, think God. Filter everything through the lens of your own perspective. Uh, Understand that the intention uh, of the ideas conveyed are more important than the language itself. So the point is just like, we can't be perfect, so we're going to do the best we can. All right, uh, I'm Greg. My talk is MMORPG. That is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Now that's a computer game for a lot of people uh, that may or may not know. Um, but what this really is, is a language. I will be using the language of video games um, in order to talk a little bit about the nature of reality. And so if it relates to you, great. If uh, we're gonna do the best we can, and we're gonna get through it. So uh, we're also going to do some visualization exercises where we um, kind of go in and out of the body and try to give ourselves a new perspective as, as we learn and try to explore some fun concepts. And uh, audience participation. So like, here we go. Like we're gonna, I'm gonna we'll, we'll be calling on people. It's gonna be great. So, <laughs> and then if we've got enough time, I'm gonna try to tell a story. Here we go. This is a picture of World of Warcraft. This is probably the most popular online role-playing game that exists. It's very old um, and, and very big. This is a picture of a guild, a team in World of Warcraft. Every single one of these like little, little icons, it's a, that's a person. That's a, that's a little dude with their own little backstory, uh, with, their own, with their own history, with their own goals, with their own intentions. Um, and they all play together. Uh, they all work together to take down a, a big boss, or to earn money, or to, um, or to accomplish any sort of task, any sort of goal that they're interested in. Um, now they all, in, in MMOs and in role-playing games, they all have different roles. People do different things with the skills that they bring with them. Some people, um, the, the main three, uh, they call them tank, heals, and DPS. The tank takes the hits from the big boss, the heals heal the tank, and the DPS does damage. Everyone has their role to play in the dance that we're all doing together. Um, we all, we all, they all, everyone benefits from having a shared vision. We're able to kind of walk together into the future that we plan before, execute, and then follow through with. Um, so, they're actually called avatars. The, the character that you wear is an avatar, so it's not actually the person. We all know when you're playing a video game, you're not actually the little, the little guy. Uh, they're all wearing masks. So you kind of put on your mask of this guy, and that's you. You get to escape a little bit from your reality to wear a mask. Now, in our reality here and now, we all wear masks too, don't we? We put on we put on a different mask for different situations, for different places we go, for different people we interact with. Um, with a friend that is, you haven't seen in a while, you're gonna be a different person because they see you as a different person and you see this interaction that you have had with them by, its, by a completely different light than someone you hang out with every single day. Um, Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage and all the men and women are merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. Everyone wears a mask, and everyone 
projects themselves into this reality with a mask. Okay. Um, so just like an MMO, we're playing a role together with all the others around us in this huge world. We have the choice to treat it like a game and have fun with it and experience the joy that is being. Um, everyone has their own experience. Everyone's Everyone has their own perspective, everyone has their own thing, but all together we are co-creating our reality. And so the question I pose to you is what role are you playing in the life that we are building together? Uh, games have NPCs and PCs. Now, it's another thing, there's non-player characters and player characters. All of these would be a player character because someone actually controls them. Now when they go around and they interact with someone, someone the game has people, a quest giver, someone that uh, will tell you what to do, a non-player character. Uh, if you aren't the one playing the game, what are you? You have surrendered your agency uh, and are allowing your environment to dictate your beliefs, are now allowing your environment to dictate your being. You should be the player character of your life. This is an inventory screen of a video game. So this is what the character is carrying. He has some weapons and some bread and, and some, some he's wearing clothes, things like this. Um, well, the point is, you also have an inventory. Right now, you are holding stuff. What is your inventory? Are you wearing a shirt? Oh, I've uh, got pants, shoes. These are things that I equipped at the beginning of the day. Um, okay, and so what, uh, what does your inventory, what does your equipment, what does this say about you? You, you chose this. You put on the clothes this morning to project the appearance that you are now, like intentionally, or, or you didn't. That's, that's the question. Did you do it intentionally, or did, did it just happen to you? And the goal is to always do it intentionally. Um, so like stories, you notice someone with a gun on each hip, and they're carrying a knife and, and walking through Walmart, right? What story does that tell? What, what image does this portray for people? Well, it tells a story. I mean, you, you look at them, you can, you can see what they chose and how they, how they chose to display themselves, and you you get a picture, like you get an idea, preconceived, and maybe not right at all, but, but you get an idea. Um, so on the, on the same vein, like what does, um, you look at you look at Lady Gaga, right? Uh, what story does she tell? Well, if we don't know Lady Gaga, is someone that wears extremely flashy, fancy, nonsense costumes. Anyway, why does she do that? Uh, what is the point? She's kind of the living embodiment of no news, or <laughs> there's no such thing as bad news. Um, so, flashy characters in, in a video game, in real life, flashiness, peacocking, all of, these, all of these words that talk about how we draw attention to ourselves, all of that matters. It all is to draw our attention. Why? Because our awareness has value. Where you place your awareness matters. Every instant. Who do you think about most in your life? Do you think about celebrities? Do you think about yourself? Honestly. My kids. The most. Kids. Mm-hmm. Yep. Where you put your awareness determines the reality you will experience. Um, so, yeah, family members, spouses, childs, friends, yourself, you have to know yourself. You have to turn your awareness onto yourself uh, <laughs> because you can only meet someone else. You can only know another person as deeply as you know yourself. So know thyself and understand who you are and what you are because then you can recognize that in other people. Namaste, right? Um, so, yeah, golden rule. Treat others as you treat yourself. If you're not treating yourself right, how can you treat anyone else right? It, it, this is, is basic stuff. It's, in, it's impossible. You have to 
You have to love yourself. Love your neighbor as thyself. Um, same vein, how do you forgive yourself? How well do you forgive yourself? You screwed up. Everyone screws up. How often do you think about that? You think about that the next day? You thinking about that while you try to go to sleep at night? Forgive yourself. Forgive everything that you have ever done. Release that burden from yourself. Uh, because you can't forgive other people until you forgive yourself. So, um, all this is going, all this is pointing out basically the idea, accept personal responsibility for all of your actions and for everything in your entire life. Your appearance, you chose it. The things you are holding, you chose it. All of this is you. Uh, who you are, what you bring with you into the now. And that's what we're kind of going to get into a lot, is the, is the now. Where we are in the now. Um, it's about personal responsibility. And while I was looking around, I found some cool quotes about personal responsibility. Uh, I don't know if we can read them or I should read them. Either way, it's a pretty neat, pretty neat little spread. Uh, let's see, my favorite one... Uh, I'll do the Hal Elrod. The moment you accept responsibility for everything in your life is the moment you gain the power to change anything in your life. We've got, I didn't know who that guy is. Like, I, I, I still don't know. Uh, but then, I like the quote though. Uh, then there's Albert Einstein, the Dalai Lama, and Sophocles. Um, personal responsibility. Okay, now we're going to do an exercise. Here we go. Uh, so what we're going to do is... When you're making a character in a video game, you have a little guy. They've got a little body. You also have a little guy. You got a little body. Why don't we take a look at ourselves? Because we, we determined, we, we knew intellectually what we were wearing and what we were holding and, and who we are. Now let's look at ourselves from an external perspective. Like, notice yourself as others do. Rotate yourself around. So by doing this, we, we are not within our body. Our awareness has become external to our body, our, our visualization, where, where we placed our awareness outside of this physical form by doing that. Um, you're, you're not trapped here behind the eyes. You can place your awareness wherever you wish. It is yours. It is you. You are the awareness that is experiencing this co-created consciousness-based reality. Um, while we're doing that, right, we just, we just found that we can leave and look at ourselves. Okay, so let's visualize, visualize your drive here. Got in the car. Drove here, we made a stop. Got some coffee. Visualize your drive home. Church is over, Sue gave a great talk, and we all get in the car, and maybe we go somewhere, and we go, go to our grandparents' house, we go to our children's house, uh, and um, we're driving, and we're there. So you are not only where you place your awareness. You're, you're not that physical location, you are also when you place your awareness. You can think of things forward and backwards in time, and where your awareness is, there you are also. Have you ever known anybody that you would describe as, oh, they're just living in the past? Well, they are. Yeah. They, they are not in the now. They are living from preconceived notions built up over their lifetime of, of experiences. And... You know, the, the, the Buddhists are huge about the now, the Tao. You know, that's like, well, forget everything and live in the now. And yet, that's, that's kind of right. That's the crux of the issue is because you don't have a past. You don't have a future. It, it is literally experiencing reality is the now, but your awareness can go anywhere. Yeah. I would say most people are li living either in the past or, or the, the future. Because mm -hmm. we're always worrying about the future yep. and we're always... 
the right things that we've done. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mo it, most people, Paul says, are living in either the uh, past or the future, uh, he thinks, because you get a little bit of of kind of disgust or, or resentment or whatever, whatever you're dragging with you from your past mistakes for a lot of people. And uh, in the future, you know, you're anxious. How will I pay my rent? How will I do these things? And so you feel, you feel disconnected from yourself because yourself is in the now. You ever see that thing downtown, you know, if you're, it's written on one of the buildings on Walnut and South. Did I ever see that thing downtown? Yeah, that's that's really not just what itself. you said, yeah, yep. a guy on a donkey or something. Yeah. And it's like if you're if you're depressed, you're living in the past. Yep. If you're anxious, it's exactly it's right. South and so reality kind of has a certain speed that we're all trying to keep up with, and if you don't keep up with it, you fall behind, and if you go too fast, you burn out. It's not the point of my talk. We're going. Uh, okay, so uh, you carry you carry the past when you live in the past. You carry the past with you, and so like uh, Sue has said awesomely, the soul parasites like it's it's actual stuff you're carrying with you that you have to get rid of in order to in order to free yourself from from the birds. Um, and so another cool kind of thing on that is we judge others by their actions, and we judge ourselves by our intentions. And so the way you get rid of the past is you forgive it. If it's you, if it's them, if it's anything, sever the bonds and reclaim your energy. 70 times 7, right? Release them. And so it's not even, you're not even releasing them. You're only releasing yourself because all of this is about yourself, your awareness. Next. All right, here's, uh, let's go back. All right, so we're here, back to our bodies. We're not over and not anymore externalized. Like, recenter, reground, we're in the now. Uh, here's a stat page. Video games have stat pages, like where you've got attributes and skills and perks. You can open your map, all of this cool stuff. How would you describe yourself? What are your stats? Paul? Short? This one says coordination is pretty high. Uh, luck is low. Awareness is medium. Strength is low. So, so name any attribute of yourself, and you can rank it for yourself so that you have stats. Um, are you strong, weak, fast, slow? You know, all of these things. What, um, what skills and perks do you bring? Are you, well, are you a lockpick? Are you extraordinarily balanced? Do you know archery? What, <laughs> what skills do you have in your daily life? Everyone has a skill. You, you got something you can do. So do things like this. So does everyone. Everyone has an ability to bring something to the table, whatever their skills are, whatever their perks are. Uh, this one I also liked because it had uh, background and quirk in there. Um, people have quirks too, don't they? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, everyone's got a quirk. And I, I really liked uh, background because everyone has, everyone has a backstory. Everyone has a background. You know, when you create a character in Dungeons and Dragons or do anything, what's the backstory? Where, where did you come from? I really liked, uh, I, li oh, I don't know if we all know it, but Sue mentioned, and it stuck with me, uh, the little soul story. Uh, the one with the little soul that his, I'm not going to tell the whole thing because I really want to keep going, uh, but I actually did get the book, the, the little soul, because oh, yeah. her story. Yes, the one where um, I will have to be mean to you when we incarnate into Earth in order for you to learn forgiveness. So the question we posed, but that stuck with me so much, was um, <laughs> did you choose your backstory? Did, did everything that has happened to you and everything that you have done of your whole life, you chose it to bring you here? Good question. <laughs> right. Uh, so that was that was real fun. Where, <laughs> in that same vein, where does it lead? So your life has happened up to you. Uh, you know, so you have either happened in your life or your life has happened to you up to this point. Where is it going now? Now you have the infinite future before you and you get to dictate the next act, the next scene even. You could literally get up and walk out of this room and your life changes entirely. Uh, you have the power to do that. 
Uh, so, yeah, let's, if your life is a movie, let's see. So, okay, while we're on the stat page, what if, oh, we got low strength. What if you wanted to raise your strength? You could choose that. You could train your strength. What would you do? How would you train your, train your strength? Go to the gym. Go to the gym. Yeah, and do it consistently and over time or even the next day. Like, you'll, you'll feel stronger. You get stronger. You train yourself and you level up. You gain experience in skills. If you want to, if you want to be a blacksmith, hit a piece of metal with a hammer. Like, you, you're, like you can do it. That's how you get the first, that's how you get the fourth, first point of experience. Um, so, the other thing, here we go, is uh, if you visualize, can you visualize yourself at the gym? Visualize yourself doing push-ups or bicep curls or whatever you want. Think about it. Think about yourself working out. And now we know that where our awareness is, we are also. You actually are working out when you do that. And in fact, I, ha I, don't, I don't know if I can share it right now, but there are studies, uh, and I've got a, I got a source here, um, that by visualizing working out exercises and techniques, uh, you get a double digit percentage increase in that same strength. If you think about working out, you will be better and stronger without actually having to physically move. Um, it's a real, it's a, this is a real thing. It's, it's crazy. It is awesome. Uh, but, but that's where you place your awareness is actual reality for you. So yeah, now you can change your life. Next. All right, back to the now. Here we go. This is, this is a, not, we're, we're here. We're, we're, he's not in the now. Look at him. He's walking around. <laughs> But uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a thing. Working on his strength. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. I just have to say, um, is that why I gain weight when I think about food? Absolutely. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, is that why I gain weight when I think about food? And yes. Um, okay. So here we are. We're in the now. All right. Let's go to first person view. Open your eyes. Much like this. Video games you can be in first person. You're in first person right now because you're right here. You're in the now. Not doing anything. You're sitting. So let's control our perspective. Let's look somewhere. Anywhere. Notice how your view, your perspective changes. You change your perspective by changing the way your body Moved. Let's do something else. Raise an arm. We chose this. We did this. Let's put it back down. So your your awareness can be external and as internal and indistinguishable from your body. Your body is you. So you can kind of go in and out and do all these things and control it as thy will. I guess is the right way to put it. So you can raise your arm, you can be in the now, and you can control your body, but know that you are, ex you are, you are not limited by it. And so you, you came out, you got back in, and you have it within your grasp right now. You're in your body entirely. This is when you can start to notice things. Oh, okay. Uh, so your body is fantastic. It's amazing. Like, we are cool. Like, that's kind of cool, but not, we're not even in the same, same vein when we're talking about, you know, our, our physical corporeal forms. Um, every cell in your body works together. Every cell is a, is a rejoicing of the existence of being all together. We are, we are grateful to exist just by our very natures. Now the question is, did you choose to breathe? Did you choose to manufacture white blood cells? Uh, did you choose to digest your food? And you don't have to because you, you and your body are one and whole, the same as the, same as the universe is whole. 
with the, it, it, it is one and the same. Um, you kind of, <laughs> you are a, a magnificent machine of a millions and millions and millions of different parts masquerading as a whole, but also you are the whole itself. We are, <laughs> so the, I, I, I don't know exactly where I'm going with this, but the point is we are all one. Uh, and our bodies are expressions of the lower and higher realms. Um, we are not separate from each other. There is no, the, the, the distance and the apparent separation is illusory. It is an illusion. Uh, your skin is what connects you to the rest of reality and the rest of the universe. It does not separate you, but we have chosen to play this MMORPG as a way to experience being rather than non-being. We do it because it's fun. <laughs> we do it because it's awesome. Um, all right, so yeah, the the next kind of idea is, since the nature of this reality is just consciousness, the vibrations, vibratory frequencies are kind of the matter in which we build up our reality together. The, the sounds that we make, the thoughts that we have, uh, the actions that we take, all of it produces vibrations that echo within the, the sea of, of consciousness, of source field, of... of uh, the quantum realm uh, of all of these things. Name it whatever you want. God. Yeah, there we go. In the, in the sea of God, the things that we do and the thoughts that we have and the, the uh, actions that we take create the reality around us. Uh, so, uh, back to your body. We've got status bars. Games have status bars, right? Uh, this is one from The Sims. The game of The Sims, if you're unfamiliar, it's literally a game where you... You make a person, and they live a life in a house, and they go to a job, and they meet someone, and they get married, and then they have kids, and they go back and forth from work to home for the rest of their life, and then they die. <laughs> the Sims. Uh, and then, oh, you got to keep their meters topped up, otherwise they get sad, or their bladder gets too full, and they have an accident. Like, all of these, all of these meters are video game things, uh, and guess what? You got them, too. So why kind of I'm kind of talking and defining these uh, as three, we're going to talk a little bit today about three separate distinct sets of meters. Uh, we're going to talk about physical meters, we're going to talk about mental meters, and we're going to talk about spiritual meters and how you can kind of recognize these and try to keep them topped up. Excuse me. All right, physical meters. This is, this is a pretty easy one, pretty basic one. Think about your body. What do you need? You gotta go pee. You hungry? You thirsty? Yeah. You hurting? You no. Know, you hot? You cold? What's another physical meter? Oh, I did, didn't I? <laughs> Sorry. Um, I like cleanliness too. Hygiene. You know, what is your? What do you actually look like? What do you actually um, do? But we already know you're not your body, right? We know we know that your body is displaying these things, but you're you're not bound by it. You're not limited by it. We know people can achieve superhuman feats of strength. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, like, um, just, you know, we see this all the time. Like, uh, what's the Wim Hof, the breathing guy uh, that does supernatural things? He's not his body. I mean, that's his whole thing. That's the only thing he talks about is you breathe and you breathe and you breathe and then you then you turn superhuman because you don't have to like get hurt. Um, guy's crazy. Like if you haven't checked out Wim Hof, this guy's crazy and awesome. The Ice Man. The Ice Man. Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay. So what happens if you take too much damage? You get hurt. Things happen. We're still here. Uh, next, in terms of. So while we're still on our physical forms, our physical forms are what a lot of people really like to talk about. I don't know anyone that only talks about how they're feeling and how like, ah, my, my back hurts and all of these things. That's, that's where their awareness is. And that's where they're trapped. They're, they're trapped in the cycle of generally self-pity and pain and, and that slows them down even further, which is it's all a trap of the, uh, the illusion of reality. Um, 
Okay, so status effects. In a video game, you can get a status effect. Yeah, you get attacked by a monster, you get poisoned. You get poisoned in real life, too. You gain the status effect, poison. You're gonna take damage over time. You know, it's gonna hurt you. Um, another one, maybe sleepy or drunk. You can gain you can gain things that give you certain modifiers to the play, to modifiers to the way you are living and being. When you're drunk, what are you? You're clumsy, sleepy, slowed reaction time. We know we know what we know what all of that is. Um, so here's an here's an example. Oh, well, the point, the, what, one of the points is um, these status effects, these negative status effects generally happen because we have neglected one of our meters. We have let one of our meters get so low to the point that it becomes a problem. Um, so, for example, someone cuts you off in traffic, right? You just gained a status effect, annoyed. Uh, or maybe enraged, depending on how your morning has gone. Um, <laughs> you, you gain what in video game terms would be called a debuff, something that makes you worse than you were at baseline. Uh, your focus goes away, your clarity suffers, your mood is affected, and uh, like your, your life has been negatively affected by that person that cut you off. But wait, did that person do that to you? When they cut you off in traffic, did they give you the annoyed status effect, right? Or was it, some, was it something that happened that you had no control of? I don't think it was. I think you might have had a uh, patience meter that was a little too empty. Or a forgiveness meter that was maxed out. You know, you were, you were just not able to process that in a healthy way. That person didn't do it to you. You chose it. Your state of being, your state of mind chose to be annoyed. And you can also choose joy, love, forgiveness, acceptance, everything. You can choose to not be affected by the actions of the people around you and instead to see them in a different way. And by changing your perspective, you change your reality and you change theirs too, because we are co-creating it together. It's the seed you plant in the universe that will echo a thousand fold. Uh, all right. uh, you can also get positive status effects when you, when you do good things, right? You sleep a full eight hours. Well rested is a popular one, and wow, you, you, you go to sleep in the video game, and you wake up and you're feeling great. You feel great for a series of hours, it, it doesn't matter, but yeah, you can get well fed. You can pray and get a little spiritual boost for your day. Um, either way, status effects and meters and bars, all this fun stuff. All right, we're back to the now, we're going on. Here's more status bars. Uh, these are the mental ones, okay? Yeah, this is right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is the mental status bars. Yes. Yes. <laughs> because one one good way to refill your mental intellectual uh, status is to appreciate fine art would be a way that you could stimulate your mind. If you let your intellect, if you let your mind stagnate you will suffer, you will gain status effects, you will not have enough patience for the person that cuts you off in traffic. All of these things have to be monitored, noticed, and you have to be aware of them because again, if you are not aware of them, things are happening to you. You, want, you are the thing that happens. If you allow things to happen to you, the rest of reality is thereby dictated and, and forced upon you and you lose your agency. Okay, um, so here's an, an example of a mental status bar. So the, some of the examples that I had, um, safety, excitement, happiness, sadness, focus, clarity, uh, your attention span, your distraction status bar, right? 
Think of your status bar, picture your distraction, your distractedness status bar slowly filling up as a child cries. I know what that's like. Uh, <laughs> so it's a very easy example. Yes, I can feel it now. Uh, and what happens when you hit the top? What happens when you max out? Your awareness shifts to the child that is crying and was saying your name and won't stop and just a steadily increasing volume for the last couple minutes, right? Your awareness is thereby taken from you or your awareness is directed somewhere else by the actions of another being. Because you lost your agency, because you your distraction bar filled up. That's a fun way to think about things. Um, the bar, these bars, like if you if you're aware of them, the bars affect how you think about things, and even can uh, can affect what you think about because of all of these uh, all of the ways they interplay. Uh, the state of your mind is determined by your mental status bars. I'm gonna tease a little bit and just be like, okay, with all of this, you are not your thoughts. We'll probably get into that later. All right, back to the now. Here is status bars three, spiritual status bars. These are the fun ones. Um, and you'll want to uh, throw out what they think a spiritual status bar might be. Meditation. Vibration. That's a good one, yeah. Like what's your vibration at right now? Yep, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, some of my examples, gratitude, grief, fear, Intention, fulfillment, actualization, equanimity, equanimity, nice, happiness, happiness, trauma, addiction. It's the state of your soul. If you look at your status bar, these are these are ones that are very difficult to change. You're hungry, your thirst meter, you got to pee. Fix that. It's it's super easy. Just maintain your body. But these are the status bars that matter. These are the ones that we spend our lifetime filling up, that we spend every waking moment they're changing and you get to determine whether they're filling up or depleting. And that's the whole thing. Fill up your spiritual status bars. Um, so these are the state of your soul and yes, frequencies. These status bars are not quite so simple and so mundane as the thirst and the hunger and even the mental status bars. Uh, these are vibratory levels, these are frequencies that we exist within. These are places that our awareness <coughs> resides. Gratitude is a place. Gratitude is a state of being. Gratitude is a place that you can vibrate within. Same goes for grief. Same goes for all of these things. And by consciously changing where you're vibrating, you change the reality around you and the plane upon which you dwell. Um, so, we know we can leave our body. Uh, we are not our emotions either. So, we're not our body. Not our thoughts, we're not our emotions either. We are capable of experiencing emotions. And that is what being is. Being is all about this experience. So from a third party perspective, as we viewed ourselves and rotated you know, around ourselves and viewed ourselves physically, we can do the same thing spiritually as well. And See, my avatar, my character is overcome with grief. And by doing so, your awareness is not experiencing and feeling that grief, but you are noticing that your human being, your body, is. And we gain dominion over ourselves, and we gain dominion over the, the frequencies at which we vibrate when we are able to actively recognize that we have control of everything. Okay. But the point is, we're here to feel things. Right, existence. Hooray! We're, we're like, feeling grief is life. 
Feeling happiness is life. Feeling gratitude is life and pain and all of these things. That's why we're here, which brings us to the now. To feel these things is the path that we take to enlightenment and understanding. Uh, again, refer to the little soul story. We're here to feel. We're here to experience because not experiencing is by definition no change and no growth. Okay. All right, back to the now. So, we've already talked about how we're not our physical bodies. Uh, now we are going to talk about how we are not our thoughts. Anyone um, never heard of like intrusive thoughts? Anyone experience intrusive thoughts? While you're, while you're living. Hurry, 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 hurry. I'm not going to make the class. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Exactly. <laughs> Hurry, I'm not going to make the class. Yep. Uh, sure. So this lady's worrying about when is that PTA newsletter due? Uh, laundry, dishes, make beds. So she's not living in the nap. She's living in her thoughts. Um, intrusive thoughts. I mean, there's a good, bad, whatever. What the 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 idea that we're going to talk about. Here's where I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a little bit of a story. Reposition him. Is want to sit while cross like me. What was that? I said, ah, uh, to be that flexible. <laughs> well, no, I want to be walking around. I, I feel very limited by the camera now. Um, so, okay. Imagine yourself walking down a, a street, just a windy street. Here we are walking down. You get hit in the face with a piece of paper, okay? Piece of paper. A, a little scrap of paper just kind of blows on you, and you pick it and go, no. Are zebras white with black stripes or black with white stripes? <laughs> Where did that thought come from? Like, it, that, you didn't originally, like, you didn't think that. You just had a thought, an intrusive thought. It stumbled upon you. Now, you go, okay, and you throw it away, and you keep walking, and then you get hit in the face with something real big, like a newspaper, just covers your face. And it's something like this. Oh my gosh, my, my day is so busy, I have to pick up my daughter, I have to drop off the dry cleaning, I have to get the car maintenance, I have to go to work, and then I have to go home and I have to do the shopping and I have to make dinner. It's your, it's your internal monologue, right? Like you, 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 and it never stops chattering. You got a whole data dump, right? That, that is just blathering in the background and these are your thoughts. These are the thoughts that you are dwelling within, sort of. Um, and, and so, those are ones you kind of keep with you. Now, you get hit with a thought. Um, so something like, uh, I should buy a Christmas gift. That's important, like for, for, for Steve. We gotta, get, we gotta get a gift for Steve. Ah. Um, so that's something you might put in your pocket. Keep with you. Because if you, don't, if you don't keep it with you, you're gonna forget about Steve and his gift. And yeah, we can't, we can't do that. Um, <laughs> And so your, your life and your being is kind of a collection of all the thoughts that you have been struck with that you have collected and kept over the entire entirety of your existence. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> And so as a, as a child, you were bombarded and given these pieces of paper. And in some cases, they were plastered to you. Now as an adult, now as the, as the agent and the acting director of the movie that is your life, you can decide now which thoughts to incorporate and which to not. Uh, which to plaster onto yourself and, and decide that they are a core part of your being and which to let go. Now, like paper mache, right? You're, you're walking along and you're just like, I love everything that the media is telling me. All, give, give me it all. So you get bombarded and you're just, you grow and you grow and you grow and you can't move anymore. 
You, you, you are dragging thoughts behind you. You are burdened. You are, you have surrendered all of your agency to the world around you blowing at you. Because you're getting bombarded all the time from every direction. Look at me, 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 look at me. Awareness. Because everything knows, because, because of the value that your awareness has, you have to jealously guard it and not surrender it to, to externalities that are demanding it of you. Um, so kind of your being, your, as you build these thoughts together into your constructed identity, you're covering up your truth. You're covering up your light. You're covering up the divinity within. And in order to sift through it all, because as you as you get harder and harder, as the paper mache dries, as you as you become more rigid in your old age and your accumulated lifetime of thoughts that you have you have built your your personality and your identity upon. It's so much harder to move when you don't have the flexibility. And by, it's so painful to pry apart these core foundational thoughts that you made a part of your identity or were given to you as a child. It all has to go away in order for you to regain the dexterity and the nimbleness to dance through the, the swirling windstorm full of thoughts that is the reality, the vortex uh, of thoughts that we live within. It all must, <laughs> your mental, <laughs> your spiritual status bars being full give you the ability to to not to, to be able to choose what and what not to incorporate into your being. Okay, yeah. So that's kind of where I wanted to go with that story. Not entirely there, um, but uh, back to it. We are we are not our thoughts, and they can be left behind. Is what I'll end with. And so now we've got. I've got a little little secret here at the end, but uh, this was kind of the official end of my talk, uh, but we'll, we'll get through here. Right now I've got some quotes that I found interesting. It's a lot of heavy, heavy, interesting stuff that we don't have to go deeply into, but I would love to at any time with anyone. So like, get me up. This one is, you are not your thoughts. You are the presence of, you are the presence of awareness that perceives them. Got some Joey D, as we call it home, Joe Dispenza. When you think from your past memories, you can only create past experiences. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. Man, know thyself, then thou shalt know the universe and God, because you are God. Spoiler alert, experiencing all of this together. That was Pythagoras. I found some Fillmore quotes. Cousin, we're in unity. Here we are. Um, <laughs> you do not have a problem except the one that is in your own mind, and you put it there. Thank you, Myrtle. <laughs> and words are seeds, and when dropped into the invisible spiritual substance, they grow and bring forth after their kind. The invisible substance, the quantum realm, consciousness, source field, God, nature of reality. The world will ask you who you are, and if you do not know, the world will tell you. Carl Jung. <laughs> Nothing can harm you as much as your own thoughts, unguarded. Buddha. Reality is created by the mind. We can change our reality by changing our mind. It's Plato. And a really neat graphic uh, that I like uh, from Joe Dispenza is, this is the, 
So I, no, no, no claim to any of the accuracy. I really like the message. Um, this is from thought to energy to matter. He kind of puts in order the vibra vibratory frequencies that consciousness is based upon. So more of the base elements, the base frequencies down at the bottom, deep and slow, lust, pain, victimization, suffering, shame, guilt, fear. And as we, as we get, get more high, as we get higher in the, in the frequency of the vibrations, we get a little bit more energetic vibrations. Someone living in pain and suffering and victimization is going slow. Yeah. Um, does, does he talk about, or does, I mean, Abraham Hicks talks about this same scale of emotions. Mm -hmm. And you get three quarters of the way up there into, like, even boredom. Mm -hmm. um, the law of attraction will actually pull you up from there where otherwise it works, it pulls you down. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So, so you're naturally, you're not, you're not floating here. You're, you're, uh, you're paddling as fast as you can. Uh, you have to exert the energy to raise your vibrational frequency or else you are sinking. <laughs> Law of attraction. You have to, you have to recognize that it, you need to be operating and vibrating on a higher level in order to attract it to you and attract yourself to it. You gotta, you gotta do the thing. And it's not anybody else's job. If, it's your job to do it for it's you. Right. It is your job to do it for you. <laughs> Um, okay, the last here. I, I got. I got my wrap up. No, no, you're good. We got, we're ready. Um, <laughs> all standing. No, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So energy. Uh, so this this is a neat, not the be all end all. And there there are so many tools. Please, please use all the tools. Right. So I like the the phrase. There's many paths up the mountain, but the only person wasting their time is the one running around. At the foot of the mountain, telling everyone else they're on the wrong path. Yes, yes. Use your own lens to get there. And you can get there. Make no mistake. You can do this. Um, this is, I like this as a picture of Christ consciousness. Christ consciousness is where we're, where we're at up at the top. That's, that's, the, that's where we're getting closer to source, right? Matter, the baseness, the profane, down at the lower frequency vibrations, because... We are thought that has congealed, so to speak. We have gone slow enough to take physical, corporeal form and experience these things as a part of the greater non-beingness that wants to experience it, experience it right? Um, what we're going to talk about here is a little bit of the fun one, uh, the, the separation. We're going to note here the the threshold at the speed of light. Okay? He doesn't like he doesn't talk about it big. He just says speed of light, and that's where no body, no one, no thing, nowhere, no time, and down at the bottom, somebody, someone, something, somewhere, sometime. So some beingness, right? Down in the matter, down in the, the lower frequencies. And then we've got the speed of light. And then above that, Energy, gratitude, appreciation, joy, love, freedom, bliss, wholeness, return to source consciousness, return to Christ consciousness. There is a threshold that you must pass at the speed of light. Because at the speed of light, there is no matter. Atoms can't be brought with you. Things, matter is not there. It is purely energy. Your ego can't come with you. The stuff you're dragging behind can't come with you. Your body can't come with you. None of it can come with you that comes from within the illusion. We rise above. We shed our externalities. We shed our corporealities. We shed our physicalities. We shed our matter to where there is no matter. Um, this threshold, passing this threshold is man's quest. Passing this threshold is the hero's journey. This is the Holy Grail. This is Nirvana. This is Bodhi. This is salvation. This is Moksha. 
This is enlightenment. This is the Tao. This is ego death. This is being born again. This is transcendence. This is the kingdom of heaven. And this is I am. That was fantastic, and uh, this was Craig's first time, so I know. I'm hoping it's, we get him here. It's too bad he's not normally a public speaker, like he said oh in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, natural. You know, we, we normally try and wrap things up real quick here, but I just wanted to throw open, does anybody have any comments Please. or questions yeah. since Greg is right up at the front here? I know we were talking last, uh, a couple of weeks ago, about how, why... Sorry, we're talking about the games and stuff, mm -hmm. and, and I said, well, you know, there are cheat codes and stuff, mm -hmm. and I was talking about how, but after a while, if you do all the cheat codes and you're just like, you have all the bars mm -hmm. high and you're, you know, you can you never die, it's never fun. Yeah. It's not fun at all. After a while, it just, it's really boring. So yeah. it's kind of like, okay, that's why we... You know, have limited sources sometimes, I think, so that we can enjoy the things that we already have. Exactly. Yeah. Duality, right? Uh, it is, if, if there is no difference, nothing is happening. God, God would get bored on we, man. Well, just like would we ever learn anything if everything was just given right to you? Right. Mm -hmm. Static. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, oh, Steve, just a quick comment. Yeah, I didn't need to. Oh, I think you did a great job. <laughs> and you presented the problem. But in, in, I'll just offer up a thought, and I'm a Buddhist, so <laughs> filter that. Pretty much everything we have to deal with is anti evolutionary. Okay. You're wired to respond to attack. If you didn't, as a caveman, you would lose status. If you lost status, you wouldn't get food, you wouldn't get the best women. So you're hardwired. <laughs> From, from, the, from the very beginning of your being to respond in certain ways. And those certain ways create then internal uh, manifestations of things like blood pressure, mm -hmm. um, serotonin or adrenaline. Um, there's a host of things that happen within you. So as a practice, from my personal experience, to be able to learn to pay attention to your body at the, you call it the vibrational level, and I would just call it a, the sensory level, what's my respiration, what's my, you hand me the microphone, am I aware of the fact that maybe I'm a little flushed? Did my breath change a little bit? Did my pulse change? Because those things can be managed. And if you can learn to manage those things, these other things take care of themselves. All the so I'll just throw that out as a thought. But good talk, I, I enjoyed it. Chop wood, carry water. I'm going to from a distance. I changed my mind. Oh, I'm sorry. I changed my mind. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Greg. That was fantastic. You don't have to move. No. I am just going to uh, put out a few announcements here. I hear. Oh, that's a car. Isn't it's it? not mine. Okay. <laughs> As a reminder, if <laughs> you're trying to get out of the car, aren't you? <laughs> if Springfield Public Schools are closed due to the weather, the church office will also be closed, and with the exception of the crisis cold weather shelter. All scheduled activities are canceled. If the weather looks dicey over the weekend, please check the church's website or Unity's Facebook page to make sure that we will be open. And we are going into the winter months, so we have to be aware of that. Also, neither Matt Makers nor Abraham Hicks Meditation Group will be meeting the weekends of Christmas or New Year's. And we're not having the adult class on Christmas Day or New Year's Day, by the way, too. The New Thought World Religions class next weekend uh, will be taught by Mary Hilsebeck Huber, concluding her presentation on Brene Brown's Atlas of the Heart. If you would like to uh, help underwrite the YOU Service Fund, uh, Project Fundraiser and send a Santagram, sign up in the foyer. Suggested love offering is $25. Our beautiful candlelight service will be held on December 23rd at 7 p.m. And Friday night, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, if you, if you, let's see, if you find yourself at loose ends for the Christmas holidays, plan to join us for Christmas dinner at 2 p.m. on December 25th. 
please RSVP in the foyer how many will be in your party and what dish you'll be bringing. If you're looking for a special way to close out 2022, please join us on New Year's Eve at 7 p.m. for a drum circle led by Neil Landu and uh, Dee Dee Arman. And then finally, the last thing is the Burning Bowl. We're doing the Burning Bowl on Friday, December 30th at 7 p.m. Uh, so that's it. Oh my gosh, I love you guys so much. All right. And we're saying goodnight. Good night.